Bila lawas, I'll give the opportunity to Colonel Jean Likud, the Regional Field Unit Chief of uh, CRG Region 11 based in Davao City. Right. Salamat General. Uh, Colonel Likud, you have the floor po to present the yes. highlights in tong slide. To the Chairman, Madam uh, Risa Ontiveros, ma'am, good afternoon. The other members of the uh, Senate and of course the distinguished visitors. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, the uh, presentation that, that I'll be making uh, this afternoon is uh, just uh, uh, to uh, support whether or not there is an existence of uh, angels of death. So if you don't mind, uh, if we could just go back uh, just a little bit to the uh, background ma'am so that I can, uh, I can read. Please proceed, Colonel. Just to, to, to read a little bit with the background of uh, the, the so-called so angels of death. Pastor Apollo Covilloy, the self-proclaimed appointed son of God, has used the term angels of death to threaten the members who violate the doctrine, teachings, and code of secrecy of KOGC. Thus, the angels of death was established in 1990. Apollo Kivoloy handpicked trusted members with background in military and security training to compose the angels of death, which later on utilized as liquidation team to various KOGC locations nationwide. Members reportedly possess firearms and are supervised by Crescente Chavez Canada, or also known as uh, Enteng and Ingrid Canada. So you might be smiling right now, but later I will prove it to you in the uh, succeeding slides. These angels of death reportedly operate as a secretive loyal group within the KOGC ministry capable of imposing both physical and psychological harm on those who do not comply with Kiboloy's wishes. The very name, Angels of Death, suggests a level of intimidation and power that goes beyond mere spiritual guidance. The allegations paint a picture of an organization that functions as a private army, a weaponized wing of Kibolois Church used to coerce and control members, particularly vulnerable young women whom Kibolois has allegedly abused. On the part of the investigation as the primary investigation office of Philippine National Police and in behalf of my director, of the Criminal Investigation uh, and Detection Group. We have set some objectives pertaining to the uh, very existence, whether or not the uh, angels of death does exist or not. So we establish some objectives to prove whether or not angels of death exist. Second, reinvestigate dismissed cases involving deaths by members of angels of death. Third, identify the crimes perpetrated by the alleged angels of death and its surrounding circumstances. Fourth, identify the degree of participation of members and provide evidence for filing of appropriate charges in court. Definitely, we have to find evidence so that we can file a complaint before the court. As to the efforts that is being undertaken by the CIG, CIDG in particular and the PNP in general, we are continue, continuously identifying the alleged members of Angels of Death, profiling of the alleged members, interview of victims, family, relatives, and witnesses relative to the crimes perpetrated by the alleged angels of death, thorough and discreet validation on the involvement of the alleged angels of death relative to the death of former KOGC members, coordination with other intelligence units, the local police, the AFP, counterparts, and other agencies for case buildup and possible operations if evidence warrants. And next is continuous monitoring and gathering of information and submission, submission of development report as obtained. Now, ma'am, I would like to bring your attention to the diagram being shown in uh, this slide. We would like to show you how is the flow of instruction being undertaken. Of course, as we all know, that the KOGC is a structured organization, but this one, it is not an structured organization. Kaya yung angels of death, ma'am, is uh, just a, uh, the, the term that is being used, but it is not an organization. It, it, it is how uh, in this diagram how the uh, instruction is being relayed or being followed by the members well of course on the right corner as you can see is pastor apollo kibuloy based on that diagram madam chairman there are four na kanyang pinagkakatiwalaan ng kanyang mga instruction si mr b of course uh, mr crescente canada um, si ingrid canada at saka si Pastor Akobo, based on the diagram. Yan ma'am yung apat na mga pinagkakatiwalaan niya. As of now, base doon sa mga nakukuha nating mga interviews and affidavits na nakuha natin. So yan ang lumalabas sa, <coughs> sa ating istru structure. 
Now, ma'am, uh, in relation to the uh, punishments being undertaken on some deaths also, but we are not saying that they are the perpetrators. That's why, on the words of our director, we are on case build-up. We have to, uh, to, uh, to gather evidence so that we can prove the uh, objectives that we wanted, to prove the, uh, the uh, whatever crimes that was committed. Those are the circumstances. To explain further, ma'am, the, uh, the uh, diagram. If you, if you see on the diagram, ma'am, most of the uh, instructions is coming from Ingrid, Canada. However, uh, if you look into the diagram, that line po siya, ma'am. So meaning, uh, she gives the instruction. However, they need confirmation from Crescente, Canada. That is why there is a solid line uh, coming from Crescente, Canada. So hindi po pwedeng si Ingrid lamang po yung magbibigay ng uh, instruction at siya lang din po yung susundin. So, magagaling, uh, iko-confirm din po nung mga 1 to 12 na yan and more kay uh, Crescente, Canada. Yan po yung uh, usually nangyari. As what uh, we are saying, ma'am, these are all taken, extracted from the accounts of our witnesses and taken from their affidavits. Hindi ito imbento. All others, ma'am, uh, yung mga nandiyan, ma'am, yung mga nakapula po dyan, ma'am, uh, if you look into that. So, yan ma'am, yung mga ongoing investigation po natin. Yung mga tinakpan po natin na ABC, yan ay mga witnesses po natin ma'am. And uh, with indulgence of the committee, Madam Chairman, uh, since this is an ongoing investigation and we're uh, looking into into some uh, evidence uh, before we can file uh, a uh, case before the court of law, yan po lang muna yung maipapakita natin sa ngayon ma'am. Marami salamat uh, para doon, uh, Colonel Likud. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, just a couple of follow-up questions kung uh, pwede na rin sagutin. Una po, sa tingin nyo ba, tuloy-tuloy pa yung trafficking operations uh, ng KOJC? General Torre. Based on our assessment, assessment ma'am, yes. Uh, there's still a possibility, although not on, obviously not on the same scale as when uh, Kibuloy is still uh, heading the operations. And with this uh, kind of... Uh, uh, publicity that we are that uh, the good senator is doing, I believe that uh, this will have a great impact in stopping this uh, illegal activity, ma'am. Uh, sana nga po, General. Salamat. At yes. lastly, uh, at this point in time, uh, sino ang new leader? May information ba kayo kung sinong lumilitaw na bagong head pastor? As of the moment, ma'am, um, based on that uh, link diagram, ma'am, you can see there the, on the upper right corner, uh, uh, Mr. Marlon Acobo. Uh, he has been uh, doing the troll, using, uh, doing the troll ever, ever since uh, I was there, we were there. And I would like to clarify that among the informants that we had, uh, uh, among the informants that, that were covered in that uh, link diagram are people that you actually heard a while ago, ma'am. So those, are, those people there are prominently, the people that we heard a while ago are prominently playing a role in that uh, link diagram. Maraming salamat para doon, uh, General Torre at uh, Colonel Marantan at uh, Colonel Likud.